I've been wondering if I can use 3D scanning with photogrammetry to make real functional parts for my workshop on my Ender 3 version 2. In this video, we're going to find out if it is really possible. So stick around. In my home shop, the biggest issue is dust collection. I have both metalworking machines and I have woodworking machines. So for me, this project is perfect for 3D scanning. What I'd like to do is take these old machines, get underneath there, perform a 3D scan, and see if I can develop some sort of dust collection system that fits perfectly in here, that looks professional, that is gonna work for a really long time. So I have this machine, the bandsaw, and I have this guy here, the Makita planer. Now this Makita planer, I will link a restoration video up on the top if you guys are interested in that type of thing. Right now, all I'm using is a cardboard dust collector that I made up. So it is definitely not gonna last, but it does work pretty well. So for the best chance of success on this project, we're gonna need to understand a few things. This setup relies on a series of high quality photos. Well, you get high quality photos by having lots of light. I have lots of light on the ceiling and multiple LEDs, but I don't have much light from the floor. So I've set up these two stands for lighting to get into the shadowed areas. And the other thing is, if you have a high quality camera, you're gonna have a better result. If you have a low quality camera and maybe an old phone, you might not get a very good result. Now some smaller details, if you are scanning objects that have shiny surfaces or clear surfaces, this software will struggle with that. So just keep that in mind. The more variation in color and texture on your surface, the better the result is gonna be as well. Now, some phones do incorporate a new sensor called a LiDAR sensor. Now, that sensor can be in incorporated into 3D scans. Now, what I found in my testing, though, is it is not terribly accurate for capturing very fine detail. It seems to be better for overall, capturing overall rooms and large distances. So we're going to stay away from using that part of the software, and we're going to just rely on the photo part of the software. Now, because lighting is so important, I'm gonna go ahead and add a bit more light under the table from the back. I've been testing a few 3D scanning softwares for over a month and I've settled on this one because it seems to be the most reliable and has really good accuracy. But I'm sure there's some other good ones out there as well. This is a paid version, which is maybe why it's a little bit better. Now quite a few of the apps fail partway through, which means I needed to retake all the photos and sometimes they just wouldn't work at all even after multiple attempts. With this app, there are two settings for taking images. The manual version, which will take longer, but you could use a tripod for very clear images, or the automatic version, which is what I prefer for speed. The more light you have, the faster the shutter speed and the less blur you'll have in the images as you move around. Some of the very dark areas will show up as flat surfaces or slightly concave. In my case, it doesn't really matter, but I could have added a light from inside to capture some of that internal detail. This software also has a feature called masking, which is pretty cool because it automatically crops out the background of the 3D scan, which is perfect for me here because I don't need to see any of that detail. And this is the result after processing, which took about 10 minutes. And I find they always look really good with the images overlaid. To see what you really have, let's have a look without the overlay on it. And I have to say, this is really impressive. This is the first time I've scanned my bandsaw, and it looks perfectly usable to me. For the planar scan, I'll add a few widgets to help the software overlap the images in the uniform areas. The planar model didn't turn out quite as well. Any reflective surfaces didn't come in correctly, and the software didn't completely capture this very thin hood plate. It may have required more close-up images and probably a little bit more experience with the app as well. Now, in order to use the file in Fusion 360, I needed to purchase the subscription. The one that I opted for was for $10 a month, and with that, I can export the file in a mesh format. There are two time-saving features built into the software. The first is scale. Now that may be specific to a phone with a LiDAR sensor because that would allow a distance to be associated with an image. And the second is orientation. 
Rotating a mesh in all three axes is a massive waste of time, and it's difficult to get exact when you don't have perfectly flat surfaces for reference as well. I brought the meshes into Fusion 360 and created models for both the bandsaw and the planar dust collection. All we have left to do is 3D print them. I'm using the cheapest no-name gray PETG available to me. I just need to make sure that it's kept dry for the best results. Now originally I wanted to be able to change the angle of the table while using the dust collection, but I changed my mind because I don't usually tilt the table. But obviously a little bit more work needs to go into this design. I have clearances for the table to tilt, but ended up just securing it to a bolt location which prevents that rotation. Maybe magnets would work well or some other option, so if you guys have some ideas on that subject, please let me know. Here is the bandsaw without dust collection, and you can see a lot of fine particles are ejected. Some also end up inside of the machine. And here it is with. Most are being collected, but it needs a little bit more work to capture some of those small flyaways. Overall though, it works like it should. I'm pretty happy with it. Now the planer makes an awful mess all over. The planer works great, but I hate using it because it doesn't have dust collection on it. And here's the planer working with the collection mounted with exterior mounting tape, and it works great. This design still allows the removal of the hood for access to the blades. The only flaw in this design is that for the ease of printing, I centered the adapter port and it really should have been off to one side to keep the hose out of the way of the stock. Overall, I'm pretty pleased with how these 3D scanning softwares helped to create these designs. I did notice some small discrepancies with the scale of both designs. They were off by between 4 and 5 millimeters on some of the larger measurements. Let me know what you think about these designs, and if you have any other ideas for the use of this software, I'm curious to know what they are. Take care, everybody, and we'll see you on the next one.